On the 9th of December, 1946, in Nuremberg, Germany, the doctor's trial began with 23 defendants who either participated in the deadly Nazi euthanasia program, killing mentally or physically disabled people deemed unworthy of life, or conducted cruel, painful, and often deadly medical experiments on prisoners in Nazi concentration camps during World War II. After a number of gruesome testimonies, seven defendants were sentenced to death by hanging. One of them was Rudolf Brandt. Rudolf Brandt was born on June 2, 1909, in Frankfurt, then part of the German Empire. His father was a railway worker, and Rudolf became a lawyer after studying at the University of Berlin and the University of Vienna in 1933. In 1932, he joined the Nazi Party, and in 1933, he joined the SS. Because Rudolf Brandt was a skilled stenographer, which utilizes a method of abbreviated symbolic writing that increases speed and brevity of writing, he caught the eye of Heinrich Himmler, head of the SS, who made him one of his staff. Brandt was aware of the atrocities Himmler's units were committing, as he handled all the correspondence besides the matters concerning the Waffen-SS or the police. According to one testimony, Rudolf Brandt used to produce up to 4,000 outgoing letters per year, slept no more than four hours a night, and worked tirelessly on Himmler's evil plans from seven in the morning on. From March 1941, Brandt fought in the campaign against Greece, but he returned in May of that same year. As a member of Himmler's personal staff, from 1941 onwards, Rudolf Brandt was involved in the coordination and organization of preparatory human experiments and numerous forced sterilizations on female prisoners in the Ravensbrück and Auschwitz concentration camps by the SS doctor Karl Glauberg. In order to find the most effective method of mass sterilization, Glauberg injected Jewish victims at Auschwitz with a chemical acid that produced severe internal burns. Brandt also belonged to the Annenerbe. The Annenerbe was the SS political propaganda association, which promoted the racial doctrines of the Nazi party and supported the idea that an ancient Aryan race is biologically superior to other racial groups, and that modern Germans were its descendants. Its general secretary was Wolfram Sievers. Thus, Brandt became one of those responsible for the murder of male and female Auschwitz Jewish prisoners for the so-called Jewish Skeleton Collection, which was to be housed at the Reich University of Strasbourg after the victims were photographed and their anthropological measurements taken. The purpose of this project was to prove the alleged racial inferiority of the so-called Jewish race, and to emphasize that the Jews were subhumans and Germans were superhumans. It is believed that 86 inmates, 57 men and 29 women were gassed for this project by Josef Kramer, who later became the last commandant of Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. The gassing was conducted at Notzweiler Struthof concentration camp. This project was never completed, and when the Allies discovered the corpses, some of them were beheaded and they were preserved by formalin. In May 1945, Brandt accompanied Himmler into hiding. He later separated from Himmler, and on May 21, 1945, he surrendered to the British troops. Two days later, the captured Heinrich Himmler, his former boss, was brought into the same detention camp where Brandt was located. Soon after, on May 29, 1945, Himmler committed suicide by biting into a hidden cyanide ampule, and Rudolf Brandt was left awaiting justice. Brandt was tried at the Nuremberg doctor's trial, where he had earned a seat next to the evil Dr. Hertha Oberhäuser who assisted another protege of Himmler, Karl Gebhardt, in experiments on prisoners in which they infected open wounds with aggressive bacteria and monitored the healing with and without antibiotics, or attempted to transplant the limbs from one person to another, believing it could help in treating amputee soldiers. In summer 1947, a tribunal found Rudolf Brandt guilty of war crimes, crimes against humanity, and membership in the criminal organization, the SS, and sentenced him to death by hanging. The verdict was carried out in Landsberg Prison on the day of his 39th birthday, June 2, 1948. There were no tears shed for Rudolf Brandt. Thanks for watching the World History Channel, and don't miss our next videos. Click the subscribe button now for more interesting clips, give us a like, and see you in the following episode.